So the Nintendo Switch is a great system. It's definitely become my preferred platform for this generation, just the versatility of it. I love being able to play it in docked mode or in handheld mode, and it's been a rousing success for Nintendo. Nintendo has seen great system sales. It sold over 41 million units worldwide. The Nintendo Switch Lite just released, so things are very positive for the Nintendo Switch. But going into 2020, I feel like there are some things that Nintendo needs to address with the system. Because is any system a perfect system? No. Once you think you have a perfect system, you start to get complacent. So Nintendo needs to constantly analyze and look at what the Nintendo Switch is bringing to the table. So in today's video, I want to bring five issues up that I have with the Nintendo Switch that I feel Nintendo needs to address when it comes to the system in 2020. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about what Nintendo needs to focus on in 2020. So the way this video is going to work is I'm going to start out with things that aren't quite as big of an issue and then work our way up towards the bigger issues. So some of these things might not really resonate with you, but I think they are things that need to be talked about and addressed. So the first thing, like I said, not a huge deal, but it's something that I would like to see brought to the Nintendo Switch, and that is themes and folders. Now, when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, you can't really customize the system quite like you want to. You could do it with things like Joy-Cons, but when it comes to the actual system itself, there are no various themes you can choose from. You have a dark theme and a light theme and that's pretty much it. It doesn't really lend itself to having a lot of customization. And what's weird about this is themes aren't necessarily a new thing for a Nintendo platform. Looking at the Nintendo 3DS, there were so many awesome themes for that system. Whether you're talking about themes done by Nintendo or third party companies. Whenever I play my Nintendo 3DS, I get a Snake Eater theme because I'm a big fan of Metal Gear Solid 3. I get the music, I get little icons and little sounds that re relate to Snake eater and I just absolutely love that it's something very simple but it's something that can be easily done on the Nintendo Switch so why is this not a thing on the system I Obviously, the system is both a handheld and a home console, and the last dedicated Nintendo handheld had themes. So why are we not expanding upon this when it comes to the Nintendo Switch? And I also want to throw folders into this conversation as well, mixing it with themes, because once again, we saw folders on the Nintendo 3DS, we saw folders on the Nintendo Wii U, yet there are no folders for the Nintendo Switch. And it can be very cumbersome to go through all of your games, especially if you download a lot of digital games, in order to find the game you're looking for. I don't understand why these two basic themes like themes and folders are not available on the Nintendo Switch. This seems like something that could be a, a very easily added into the system. So Nintendo definitely needs to add it to this system. Let's be real here. This is something that I think would make it for a lot of ease of use when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. So Nintendo, wh what are you doing with this? Let let's add some themes and let's add some folders to the Switch. The next thing I would like to see Nintendo address in 2020 with the Nintendo Switch are just multimedia apps for the Nintendo Switch. Looking at the competition and looking at Nintendo themselves, all the other systems have more multimedia apps. There's a reason why my Xbox One is in my bedroom, because I like all the multimedia apps I have access to on that system. I have Amazon Prime Video, I have Hulu, I have Netflix, I have the WWE Network, all available on one simple system. Looking at the Nintendo 3DS and the Wii U, the Wii U and the 3DS had things like Netflix and Hulu on it. Yet, when we look at the Nintendo Switch, there, there's really not much. You have a YouTube app. You, have, of course, have the Hulu app. But other than that, there are no multimedia apps for the Nintendo Switch. And I'm sitting here thinking, why? Of course, Reggie, before he left Nintendo, said to ask Netflix why Netflix is not on the Nintendo Switch. But I honestly feel like there's something more going on with this. There has to be a reason why things like the WWE Network and Netflix are not available on the Nintendo Switch when they're available on on pretty much everything else that there is on the video game marketplace. Looking at things like the recently released Disney Plus, Disney Plus is available on everything except for the Nintendo Switch. It's coming soon to the Nintendo Switch. Seems like Nintendo likes to shift the blame as to why these multimedia apps are not on the Nintendo Switch to the companies themselves and saying, ask them. But I really honestly feel like there's something more going on here. There has to be a reason why Disney Plus launched on literally everything except for the Nintendo Switch, especially when, let's be real, I think it would do very well on the Nintendo Switch. Are multimedia apps necessarily needed? I mean, not really, but it's just an ease of use. It's an ease of convenience thing. It would be nice to have every single multimedia app that you could get on other platforms, such as the PS4 and the Xbox One, available on your Nintendo Switch as well, because let's be real, some people are not multi-platform owners, so I would definitely like to see a better push for multimedia apps on the Nintendo Switch in 2020. 
Now, while things like themes and folders and multimedia apps might not be a big deal to a lot of people, I feel like these next three things we can all definitely agree on. Now, the first thing I want to see Nintendo focus on in 2020 is the first half of 2020. Looking at the Nintendo Switch in both 2018 and 2019, the first half of the year was very sort of paltry when it came to new game releases. Nintendo really doesn't seem to rev up until the summer, and then once you get to the summer through the winter months, you get all of these games coming out. Looking at 2019, we had so many games come out between June and the end of the year, but the start of the year was very, very paltry. And it seems like once again, Nintendo is sort of gearing up for a soft first half of 2020. And I just don't understand why they do this. So far, we only have two games announced for the first half of 2020. That being Tokyo Mirage Sessions and of course, Animal Crossing. Now, Animal Crossing is admittedly a huge deal. That is going to be a massive game. But other than that, we don't know anything about 2020. Now, a lot of this can be rectified in a simple Nintendo Direct. But if these games are coming out in the spring or early summer of 2020, we need a Nintendo Direct to learn about what these games are going to be. I don't want to see Nintendo fall into a lull once again in the first half of 2020 like they have in 2019 and 2018. There's been some solid titles, but all of the big titles don't seem to come out until the summertime at the very earliest. Nintendo needs to do a better job of spreading out these titles, and I think 2020 should be the first year where they manage to do that, but will they do that really remains to be seen. We need a Nintendo Direct to learn about some games and some release dates, and I honestly hope that this is something Nintendo addresses in 2020. The next thing we need to see Nintendo do in 2020 with the Nintendo Switch in order to keep this momentum is something that I think Nintendo has done a decent job of doing thus far, but it needs to continue. And that is working with third party companies to essentially make these second party games, or at least helping developers publish their games on the Nintendo Switch. When you look at how many games have come out to the Nintendo Switch, there have been a ton of them. And Nintendo has actually had their hand in a lot of the bigger releases for the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo, of course, published things like Dragon Quest, 11 on the Nintendo Switch. They helped out with The Witcher 3 as well. And of course, we had things from Capcom like Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers, which was a Nintendo Switch exclusive. Looking at companies like Ubisoft, we of course had Mario and Rabbids on the Switch. We had things like Bethesda working with Nintendo to include The Legend of Zelda stuff. Of course, Platinum Games with games like Astral Chain. And even indie developers are now using Nintendo IPs with games like Cadence of Hyrule on the Nintendo Switch. But I honestly feel like this is something Nintendo needs to focus on in 2020 because as the power gap continues to get bigger. The PS5 and the Xbox Scarlet are coming in 2020. Nintendo is going to need to work with these companies in order to get these games on their system. Give companies a reason to put their third party games, essentially making them second party games or making second party exclusives by working directly with these companies on the Nintendo Switch. It's something that will definitely make these games stand out amongst the crowd. And I really want to see sort of a focus on Western developers as well when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. Yes, games from EA and Activision aren't for everyone. But if you're sitting there and saying you wouldn't like a Call of Duty on the Switch or you wouldn't like a Madden on the Switch, that might not apply to you. But I feel like there are tons of Nintendo Switch owners such as myself that would love to see a Call of Duty on the Switch, that would love to see a game like Madden on the Switch. And yes, maybe these games wouldn't sell as well as their PS4 and Xbox One counterparts, but I feel like Nintendo could do something to sort of spice that up. Maybe include some Mario mini games and something like Madden. We've actually seen EA and of course Nintendo work together with games like Fight Night on the GameCube, which of course had Super Punch-Out built into it. I think that they could do a lot with these Western developers when it comes to third party and essentially second party games. And it's something that Nintendo definitely needs to focus on in 2020 if they want to keep this momentum going for the Nintendo Switch. Plus, it'll also help alleviate the need for all these big first party Nintendo releases if Nintendo is working with these companies to make a unique game for the platform. And the final thing that I have when it comes to the Nintendo Switch in 2020 that Nintendo needs to focus on should come as a surprise to absolutely no one. It's probably the most vocal thing I've been about the Nintendo Switch, and that is the Nintendo Switch Online service. Because this thing has just been a real hodgepodge, a real mishmash of different ideas and different things, and it never really seems to reach its full potential or come anywhere close to it. Of course, you have things like cloud saves with Nintendo Switch Online and the ability to play online with people, and you have some games to check out as well. Originally, it was just NES games, and they released some NES games initially, and they came out with a few more here and there every month. Then we were introduced to Super Nintendo games, and we got a whole batch of Super Nintendo games, and then since then, they have changed their monthly release schedule of these games, and now we're just sort of sitting here waiting, wondering when the next batch of Super Nintendo games are going to come out. Are there going to be any more NES games as well? Is that 
it for the NES online service when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. And of course, where the hell are these other legacy systems? Nintendo has one of the biggest catalogs in gaming when it comes to their lineage of video games, and yet they're not fully utilizing it on the Nintendo Switch. And it just absolutely makes no sense, especially when you look at things like the competition. Even if you're just looking at it at a superficial level, things like Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Now, the real drawing power to these things is of course the ability to play everything from original Xbox games to Xbox One games or PlayStation One games to PlayStation 4 games. There's a great variety of lineage and history with these games. And yes, not every single game is available on this platform, but they do do a decent job of trying to put a great variety of games from various consoles onto these things. Yet Nintendo, which is the company that would thrive the most from this as they have all these awesome first party games and some cool third party games that came out on their various platforms over the years, just doesn't do something like this. And you can equate the fact that of course you have to factor in the price point of this. The Nintendo Switch Online service is admittedly cheaper than something like Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus. And of course the fact that these other services cost additional money. But let's be real, people would pay money and additional money in order to have a Game Pass like service on the Nintendo Switch. In order to access things like Game Boy games and DS games and N64 games, it just honestly makes no sense to me. The Nintendo Switch Online service definitely needs to be revamped and they need to focus on this in 2020 because I honestly think it could potentially be a good selling point for the system. When you're looking at the catalog of games that people want to play, you have so many to choose from. Why can't we have this sort of thing on the Nintendo Switch as well? All right, so those were five areas of improvement that I feel are needed with the Nintendo Switch in 2020. Things that Nintendo needs to focus on. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think. Do you agree with my ideas? And if not, what ideas would you like to see Nintendo implement when it comes to the Nintendo Switch in 2020 in order to keep the system going as hot as it has been? And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.